And don't stop. I hate that noise. It's got to go one, two. Doesn't have to be fast. Doesn't have to be fast. It has to be steady. It's totally different than what you can twist. Excellent. Okay, move on to the next step. Yes. Again, all we can hope to do at Winterfest here is to show you something. You gotta hopefully with someone when you get back to the dojo, you'll, you'll understand a little bit of it. Practice it, make it work better for you. Number two, I'll be trying to here one and two. And again, using Darren's and all the other seminars here, you're angling off to the side, and then you can slide in to finish them off. But again, one, two. And you notice the flow. I never stop moving. Okay, try it. Start off slowly. You just portion of the movement is working. Okay, try it again. Okay, there are many different ways to uh, work you do it there. The point is that these are basic movements. These are things that white belts do. And all my students are black belts, and we were in the Don Kung Fu. But on occasion, we will work on things like Kung Fu. Just to bring us back and to a point where some kid is now teaching, and he's got a new student in the center. He, you know, it would be nice if he sort of has an understanding of why Kung Fu is such an important part of the training. It is to develop these core principles of Wei Chi. You don't get them as a white belt. You've got to be being corrected as a black belt, and that's not easy to do. We've got our egos involved, and once you're doing something in one way, you justify it one way or the other, unless you have really open minds. But if you can get some of these things as a, a white belt, then it, it's so much easier. Uh, things like the eight forms, just eight different ways of stepping. It's just, we use them all the time. Why not take a white belt and teach them how to move? Pushing, we did that pushing exercise, so they have to move back three, three steps, come back. Once they understand it's okay to move to the rear, then all of a sudden their angles are a lot different. Now I emphasize, uh, Darren was emphasizing a lot of rearward movement. I try the more advanced people to move in with that intercepting action. Uh, but again, it, it's the uh, same thing, it's just the opposite side of the coin. All right, no, number three, we'll quickly go through it. <coughs> and again, the first movement, Parry and then slide back. I use a kind of a grip or a pressure point here, here, and then throw in the kick. Once again. One and two. And you notice how, how simple my movements are. And I can do anything else, but I'm not trying to attack the arm. If he kept moving in, what would happen? He'd be defeating himself. The moment you attack the arm, that's when you put yourself out of the picture. But if you start doing this and it starts working, all of a sudden now you can apply this to all of the advanced things that you're doing. Okay, give it a try now. Number three. Go ahead and kick it. Go ahead and kick it. Number three is very simple, but if you do it wrong, there's just certain things I don't like to see. And that's where people punch really hard and they freeze. And meanwhile, the guy is doing the block and he has to sit there and wait for the next action. That, that shouldn't be the case. It, 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 Timing, distancing, balance, all those things are important. Then you want, when you're moving back from here, you should have some sort of a plan. You know? Are you going to turn this back on it? If you can, fine. But practicing here, and he's already throwing that next punch, so you sidestep at that point. Your karate kicks in, the way she kicks in, all of those good things with uh, the, uh, the angle steps, all that stuff kicks in. Oftentimes, that first attack happens so unexpectedly. That it does. And if you just get out of the way, then yeah, that's a good move. All right? A lot of people just, they're flat footed, and then if you're trying to move like this, they'll start off balance. If you can just learn to move with that flinch. Move with the flinch. Where, how many people down to with that? Hands. Okay, most, most of you do. Okay. Now here's the, the same principle with down to with Yes, I start initiating the attack. And you go here, one, two, three, four. All right, I'm just playing with it. It's not anything hard. The moment you start trying to break the leg, break the arm, all of a sudden you set up an action, you start freezing, and every movement is tension. 
And then today we're trying to soften up and have you relax, have some fun with it. Now, this time the tip's going to attack me. Now the moment I touch that arm, that attack is dead. All right, so if he, his next movement is a kick, he's not going to wait until I move his arm over here nicely, then throw the kick. As soon as that arm gets touched, he's up there. All right, so I'm down here and then I'm attacking again. That's really fast, potentially. But initially, one, two, three, four. And all the time I'm in that distance. So that I can hit him, just barely hit him, but I'm still a little bit outside that distance. So I have to move in to close, close the distance. So the drill, all the time. Soft, soft, but full contact. Don't move. All right. Doesn't hurt. So the, the moment people think they're going to get hurt, that's like when Sensei is pounding the crap out of it, and the fear hits you, you're tense. You, you, you can't be soft and tense at the same time. Alright? Oh, okay. That's it. One. That's too long. See, so here, here, at that point there, that leg has to be started. The moment the attack is dead. It's dead here. So we show the next movement here. I'm down here. And by the way, I don't block kicks this way. I block them using say time. Alright, down like that. Here and finish it now. All right, let's do that.
kinds of things that we're looking for in the start. So I'll go back to it again. Don't be competitive. And it's going to be one, two, three, and four. You can speed it up a little bit, but it's not intimidating. Make that one, two, three, and four. And these are the things that you're trying to build.
the our body and soft metal. Go for it.
Does anyone here more sensitive when they're stiff? Okay, no. So strength, speed, and sensitivity, you can't do them stiff. Okay, and one of the things I think we do sometimes when we teach martial arts, we confuse structure and stiffness. Stiffness is much easier to fake than structure. So you see an instructor with good structure and you try to imitate it by being stiff. And it fails. Um, and the other thing, or a couple other things, everyone, when you, when you take the contact out of it, people start trying to imagine whether it looks right instead of whether it works. And fighting is one of the most, it's touch, it's not sight. If you're trying to think that it looks right or it looks wrong, it doesn't matter, it's how it feels. Which means you have to be close enough to feel it, which means this all builds off everything else, right? Okay, and the last thing is, um, and I've seen it in every, every drill you were doing, um, you have to give yourself permission to improvise. Your instructor draw encouraging you to improvise, and um, for whatever reason, someone in the back of your head, some voice in the back of your head is saying, no, we've got to do things right. And so you don't let yourself experiment. So we're going to experiment a little bit. Um, we're going to put in contacts. I really want to look at what you did. Um, so this is the class I just brought you. You guys have been summer. You've already had it probably. Um, it's everything there is to know about joint blocks. How long do I have? Uh, 3 o'clock. Oh, okay, because it only takes 45 minutes. Well, then that's all you got. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it takes 45 minutes to know everything there is to know about joint blocks. And you'll be able to, by the end of 45 minutes, or if you guys are done in an hour and 10 minutes, um, you'll be able to improvise joint blocks under pressure. They aren't hard, we just teach them shit. So um, I need a tall, preferably not tall, so important, but skinny person with good joints and no contact issues. Sure. Sweet. Okay. There's only about five principles that make all joint locks work. If you screw up a joint lock, it's because one of these principles is off. You all know these, there's nothing to memorize. Um, whenever possible, you maximize your leverage. Okay, I got Jack here. I go out, every lock you can think of has a lever on it. This one, the longest lever arm you're going to get is that diagonal across the back of the hand. Short enough that lever, if it's weaker, 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 so you've got nothing. That guy is the longest lever. This is the longest lever. It works for takedowns. I can sweep here, maybe, probably, in there for sure. Just the longer lever. So sticks work better than this. They're the longer lever. Okay, second principle, whenever possible, use gravity. The farther away your arms are from you, the weaker you're going to get. You might need to weight over it. If you need to, you can fall on almost any lock. Make it work. Two way action. I can lock a lock here and push. I can hold a lock here and pull. I do it both more than twice as effective. Two-way action for everything. You can see this in everything that you do. Um, so that this is a two-way action for your own spine. It's in everything that you do. Um, locks cannot exist in here. If I do this, he's eventually going to wise up and realize he can just walk out of it. If you want to hold a lock, you either need to plant him into the ground to the his room, put him in the wall, move over car hood, or keep it continuously moving so it can't catch up. Where sooner or later you're probably going to screw up. So face out your locks. Um, there's a variation on this called stacking, where you can use multiple locks to set up different angles. Which way makes your shoulder feel better? That makes your fingers hurt. What? Which way makes your shoulders feel better? That's the one that makes your fingers hurt, right? It doesn't feel Yeah, I'm trying to be nice. I know what I got you. I'm saying, yeah, I'm going to answer. But the direction needs to go to protect the shoulder, lost fingers, the direction needs to go to protect the fingers, increase the lock of the shoulders. If you can stack multiple techniques, always stack. Um, and then I notice cross techniques, not just, there's no reason not to have an elbow with the one wrist lock. It's in the right place for the next one. Okay, and the last one, the most important is this. You will never go into a fight and create a lock. If I go into this and I'm going to get that wrist lock that I got so good at it, the police academy, I'm going to get the shit kicked out of myself while he's just pounding the crap out of me. In order to make you get a lock work, you have to find a gift. You have to find the one that he's giving you. Just like takedowns, there's no way to stand and there's no way to move without setting yourself up for lock. Um, if you want to put the lock on, you have to see it quickly enough and be ruthless enough to hit it. If it's pushing me, that's what's going to hand me the elbow. When he pulls back, which he's going to want to do, that's going to hand me the shoulder. That's what you have.